I want to just talk about what it means to follow Jesus. What does it mean to be a Christian? A lot of people, they get this mindset of like, <clears throat> I, you know, you know, we're going to follow Jesus. We're going to do a 24 hour prayer service. We're going to sing worship songs. We're going to, to read our Bibles. We're going to you know, do these things. We're, you know, stuff like that. It's like, this is what it means. Let's come together. Let's do 24 hour worship services. Let's do 24 hour prayer services. Let's have a prayer room and let's, let's fast and let's pray. Guys, <clears throat> Jesus is not going to come back and say, well done. You spent time with me. Those are not, that's not his command. He's not going to come back and say, well done, good and faithful servant. You read your Bible in the morning, even though you didn't really want to. He's not going to say, well done, good and faithful servant. You spent time with me, even though you really didn't want to. He's not going to come back and say, well done. You read the, the instructions I gave you. No. Obeying Jesus, obeying the master means we do what he says to do. It means we pick up the book. We read what he said to do, and we go do the things he taught. When it talks about abiding in him, it's not talking about let's pray and let's let's draw into his presence and feel close to him. No. First John says, the people who obey God's commands abide in God and God abides in them. We have to get past this religious, like, oh, Christianity is all about feeling close to God and having an experience. That's not what it's about. Those are benefits. I'm not saying those don't happen. I'm not saying we can't draw near to God. Fellowship with God is not his command. Fellowship is a benefit. We can have fellowship with God. That's a benefit of following Jesus. That's a benefit of putting our faith in Jesus. We get to have fellowship with God. Not we have to. If you're like, oh yeah, I just have a hard time reading my Bible. It's so dry. Look, if you don't want to spend time with God, then don't. Honestly. I, I know that kind of goes against everything, but you have bigger problems. If you don't want to spend time with God, you're, you're missing something so much bigger. You're not getting, you're not gaining anything by forcing yourself to spend time with God when you don't want to. What other relationship in your life is that a healthy relationship? It, you know, I'm married to Tess. If I, if I'm like, yeah, I'm going to spend time with Tess, even though I don't want to, would you say that I love her? No. What other relationship would we say that's love and yet we treat God that way? We say, oh yeah, I love God so much that I spend time with him every morning even though I'm tired and I don't really feel like it. No. You don't love him. Jesus doesn't say that's what it means to love him. No, Jesus says, if you love me, you will obey my commands. <clears throat> he says again, this is all John 14. That was John 14, 15. He says in John 14, 21, those who know my commands and obey them are the ones who love me. Then he says again in verse 23, If people love me, they will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come and make our home with them. Obeying Jesus is what it means to love him. That's not the only place. In 1 John 5, 3, it says, Loving God means obeying his commands. Jesus is not going to come back and say, Well done, you had a 24-hour prayer service. He's not going to come back and say, well done, you sang songs to me. He's not going to come back and say, well done, you spent time with me, even though you didn't want to. No, those are all things that we get to do. We're not commanded to do those things. Those are benefits. Those are things we should naturally want to do. When we read this book, we shouldn't be coming to it like... Like, this book, reading this in and of itself, is going to give me life. Reading this is going to just fill me up for the day, and then I'm good. No. Guys, that's the same thing the Pharisees did. Jesus said to the Pharisees, You carefully study the scriptures because you think they give you eternal life. They do, in fact, tell about me, but you refuse to come to me to have that life. Okay, reading this book tells us about Jesus so that we can follow him. Reading this book gives us the information we need to then go do what he says to do and receive life. But reading this book in the morning does not give you life. 
reading this book in and of itself is not obeying Jesus. It does not accomplish anything other than teaching you what to do. But if you read this book and you don't look for what to do, you don't look for what it means to follow Jesus, you're not gaining anything for yourselves. That's one of the biggest things that's wrong in Christianity today. We treat it like the point of following Jesus is to feel good and have an experience. Like, let me read my Bible so that I am strengthened for the day to then go about my, my life. It's not to make you feel good and feel encouraged so you can then go out and keep living like all the heathens. When John the Baptist came, he said, he taught repentance. Repentance meaning change the way you're living. And he even told people, you need to go do the things that prove you've repented. Jesus came and he was saying, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Paul, when he was going around, he was preaching repentance. Listen to what he says when, when he was standing before King Agrippa. King Agrippa, after I had this vision from heaven, I obeyed it. Indeed, I began telling people that they should change their hearts and lives and turn to God and do things to show they really had changed. Because faith doesn't mean belief. Okay? Faith does not mean you believe. Even the demons believe. Faith doesn't mean believe. That's what James talks about, but it's not just James. It's all throughout this book. Hebrews 11 is all about how faith means we follow. Faith means we act. Okay, when we read Hebrews 11, we got to start in Hebrews 10. Really, Hebrews 1, but let's start in Hebrews 10. Because Hebrews 11, everyone talks about, oh yeah, it's about faith. It's about what faith means. It's about how faith is important. But the context in Hebrews 10, right before Hebrews 11, he says... Remember those early days of your faith when you first learned the truth. You remained strong through a hard struggle with many sufferings. Sometimes you were exposed to public shame and ridicule and persecution, and sometimes you shared with those who were being treated that way. You helped the prisoners. You even had joy when all that you owned was taken from you because you knew you had something better and more lasting. So, do not throw away your confident trust in God, which has a great reward. You must hold on so you can do what God wants and receive what he promised. For in a very short time, the one who is coming will come and will not delay. Those who are right with me will live by faith, but if they turn back with fear, I will not be pleased with them. But we are not people who turn back and are lost. We are people who have faith and are saved. He's saying, guys, early on, you... You were doing these radical things. You were, you were suffering. You were being attacked. You were being persecuted. You had joy when everything you, you had was taken from you. So don't shrink back. You need to have faith. Why? Because that's what faith means. And then the writer of Hebrews goes through all these examples of what it means to have faith. He talks about Abraham and how Abraham did things and that proved his faith. Jacob did things. It proved his faith. Joseph did things. Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated and oppressed with God's people instead of enjoying the temporary pleasures of sin, because that's what faith is. Moses left Egypt. He was not afraid of the king's anger. By faith, Rahab welcomed the spies. Hebrews 11 is all about people whose faith caused them to act. This is not an idea that is isolated to the book of James. Faith causes people to act. Think of it this way. If you say you have faith in Jesus, but you don't believe him enough to do what he said, do you have faith? Okay, Jesus said some crazy things. He said, if you keep living for this life, you won't have real life. He told people, sell your possessions. Give to the poor. Give to everyone who asks. Bless those who curse you. When someone strikes you, turn the other cheek. Don't strike back. Give to your enemies. The way Jesus taught us to live is so radical, and yet Christians today have turned this into something where we say we follow him because we pray, or because we read our Bibles, or because we sing songs, and yet we don't do the things he said to do. If you don't do what Jesus said to do that's going to cost you everything in this life, it means you don't have faith.
Plain and simple. It means you don't have faith. If you don't have faith, you don't have life. If you want life with Jesus, you need to repent. You need to stop living for this world. The Bible is so clear. You cannot love God and love this world. James says in James 4, if you love this world, if you love pleasure, you're an adulterer. He says you are God's enemy if you love the world. Why? Because the kingdom of God is against this world. The kingdom of God is invading this world. And if you're choosing to be on the world's side, you're his enemy. Jesus said you cannot love God and love money, and yet Christians say, oh, I don't love money. But they, they build their lives around their retirement, they, around their careers, around having a nice house, a nice car, about, around being comfortable, getting the nice things they want. They think they're generous when they give their leftovers, but that's not what Jesus said. He said the widow who gave everything was the one who was generous. 1 Corinthians 8 is about how Christians are supposed to be sharing everything, and no one should have any excess at all. That is what it means to follow Jesus. But Christians today, they say they're not loving money. Why? Because they compare themselves to someone else. Oh, well, I don't love money because I'm not like them. That's not what Jesus' standard is. His standard is himself. You know what Jesus did? He had everything. The epitome of everything. He was equal with God. But he saw us in need and he said, I, I can't sit here and do nothing. So he gave up everything. He made himself a man. He obeyed God to the point of death on a cross. He suffered and died because he had what we needed and he was, he was going to give us everything. You know the gift of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was rich for your sake, he became poor so that by his becoming poor, you might become rich. This is what Jesus did. This is what it means to not love money, to not love the world, to not love yourself. You give everything. And Jesus' command is, go and love others as I have loved you. That's what it means to follow Jesus. If we're saying, if we're, saying we're following him, but all we're doing is having long prayer meetings and singing songs, we're no, we're no better off than... And the Pharisees. Christianity today has turned it into exactly what the Pharisees were doing, exactly what Israel was doing before God judged them. We say we follow God, we sing songs to him, we, we do our, our rituals and our feasts, and we, we sing songs, and we offer up prayers, and we read our Bibles, and we do these 24-hour prayer meetings, and we fast, and we do all this stuff that is not his commands. Fellowship with God is not his command. He did not command you to be his friend. That's something you get. That's a gift. You get to be God's friend. Don't treat that like it's a command. You need to live righteously. The Holy Spirit is not given to us so that we can have feelings and experiences. The Holy Spirit is given to us so that we have a new heart so that we do the things that are right. That's what it means to walk in the light. And when you walk in the light, then you can have fellowship with God. First John 1 says, Here is the message we've heard from Christ, and now declare to you, God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. So if we say we have fellowship with God, but we continue living in darkness, we are liars, and we do not follow the truth. Okay, do you get that? If you are living a life that goes against the, the commands of Scripture, that you are doing the things that God says is wrong, storing up wealth for yourself, living for your own pleasure, living for comfort, living for this world, you know, aside from all the uh, things we're all familiar with, like, you know, sexual sins and cussing and getting drunk and, you know, all the things the church talks about, it's like, yeah, those are all works of darkness too. But so are the things Jesus said not to do, like loving money, living for this world, living for comfort, living for the things you want, building your life around a career where you are seeking first what you're going to eat, drink, and wear, things Jesus said don't do that. When we build our lives around this life and this world, we are living in darkness. And if we live in darkness, 
And we say we have fellowship with God like most Christians do? Let's be honest. Most Christians in the world today, not all of them, but a lot of them, they live for this world. They live for this life. They live for immediate satisfaction, immediate pleasure. They think that obeying God means going to church, reading their Bible, singing songs, and praying. But they're living opposite of what Jesus taught. They are living in darkness. And John says, if we say we have fellowship with God, but we continue living in darkness, we are liars and we do not follow the truth. You do not have fellowship with God if you are living against what the word says. That's what the Bible teaches. The gospel is not about Jesus just coming and forgiving all the things we do and we keep doing it, but he just keeps forgiving. No, you need to change. And you have the power to change through the Holy Spirit. You ask God for the Holy Spirit, he will give him to you. But if you continue living in sin, then you're still dead. That's what Romans 6 is all about. Don't you know that when you were baptized, you died with Christ and you rose with him? Your old life died and your new life rose? That's what the gospel is about. Jesus came to set us free from, from being slaves of sin. That's what he said. He said, I came to set the captives free. He said, <clears throat> Those who abide in my word, who live in my message, in my teaching, they are truly my disciples, and they will know the truth, and the truth will set them free. What does that mean in the Greek? It means, it means so much more than what we see in English. It means those who abide in his teaching, who live in what he taught, doing what he taught, are truly his disciples. And they will know through personal experience what is the true reality. And that reality will set them free from slavery. What did the people say to Jesus after he said this? They said, what are you talking about? We're not slaves. We've never been slaves. And he said, everyone who sins is a slave of sin. We've quoted this a million times in the church, but he just said... He came to set them free. If he came to set them free from being slaves of sin, then why do you still live in sin? If you live in darkness, you can't have fellowship with God. This is what the gospel is all about. The gospel is all about Jesus came to let us have fellowship with God. And John continues. He says, if we say we have fellowship with God, but we continue living in darkness, we are liars and do not follow the truth. But if we live in the light as God is in the light, we can have fellowship with each other. Then the blood of Jesus, God's Son, cleanses us from every sin. If we live in the light, the Holy Spirit is given to us so that we can live in the light. This is what the gospel is all about. It's about returning to the garden where we had fellowship with God and it was ruined because of sin. And God has now made a way for us to have fellowship with him again. But we have to live in the light. It's not about just calling ourselves Christians. It's about being set free from slavery to sin and walking in the spirit. If you walk by the spirit, you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. If you are still gratifying the desires of the flesh, you are not in the light and you do not have fellowship with God. Look, this is what the Bible says. This is what it teaches. Go read it for yourself. Stop listening to men. People come and they teach a different gospel than what the Bible teaches. The church is full of false gospels. It's full of this gospel that just says, you are free, <clears throat> you are forgiven. Yes, he forgives you. Yes, he has mercy. But not so you can continue living in sin. I mean, Paul says that directly in Romans 6. He says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? No, by no means. We cannot continue living in sin. If we're living in sin, we are not living in God. We are not living in the Spirit. Living in the Spirit is opposite of living in the flesh. We were born of the flesh, but now we are born of the Spirit. We need to become spiritual. 
spirit-filled people, not people who have spiritual experiences. No, people who walk in the light, who do what God says is right, who do what God says we should be doing, who do the word. He says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? We've adopted this culture where we say we are saved by faith, not by works. And we think that means we don't need to obey, but that's not true. And even though we all say, oh, we know that's not true, we act like it is. You start bringing up verses like this, and first thing people say is, well, you don't want to be legalistic. Look, the word legalism is not in the Bible. The Pharisees were not condemned because they were trying to obey God too hard. No, Jesus said their problem was that they were not obeying him. They were not obeying God. He said, you are following your own traditions instead of the commands of God. That's what they were condemned for. No one in the entire Bible is condemned for trying to obey God too hard. It says we are not saved by works, meaning we can't earn our way to God. But you also are not saved if you never choose to obey him. If you read his words and you decide that you are not going to follow him, you are not going to do what he says, then you don't believe him. How can you say you have faith in Jesus if you are not willing to do what he says? You don't have faith if you don't obey him. His commands are not about just praying and singing songs. I'm not saying those things are bad. I'm saying those things are not what it means to obey. Those are benefits. We get to have fellowship with God if we obey him. He gives his spirit to those who obey him because those who obey him are those who love him. So start reading this and look for yourself at what Jesus says it means to be a Christian. What did the apostles say it means to be a Christian? To be a slave of Christ, a disciple of Jesus, what did they say it meant? Because the church today does not teach you what the Bible says it means to be a Christian. They follow man's traditions just like the Pharisees. They build on their own doctrines. They teach their own theology, but it doesn't come from this. They teach a gospel that's very comfortable, that tells you God forgives, God forgives, he's merciful, he's merciful. Yes, that's true, he is for those who repent, for those who change their lives and submit to him and follow him. He's very merciful and forgiving for those people. But if you don't obey his commands, you don't love him. That's what Jesus said. That's what John said. That's what Paul taught. That's what everyone in here taught. I encourage you to read through the Bible for yourself. Stop reading it through the eyes of what everyone has told you it means and start reading it for yourself. Because it does not say you are just forgiven if you say you believe in Jesus. You have to repent. You have to change the way you're living. And that doesn't just mean don't commit sexual sin and don't cuss and don't get drunk. Yeah, don't do those things, those are sin. But also, don't love the world, this life. Don't live for money. Don't live for comfort. Don't build your life around what you can see and experience. Because this is not what God has called you to. You died. If you join yourself to Jesus, you get baptized, your old life dies. So stop living for it. Stop living for this life and start living for him. That's what it means to be a Christian.